the Iron Man, a nickname that conjures up images of endurance, perseverance, and strength. It's a nickname that is earned, awarded after years of consistent hard work. In stock car racing, there is only one king and one Iron Man. There will never be another like him, Jack Ingram. John F. Kennedy was the president of the United States of America when Jack Ingram first climbed into a race car. Since that debut at the new Asheville Speedway, the Iron Man has been taking checkered flags, over 300 of them, at tracks all over the country. Jack Ingram was at his peak in the 1970s, claiming three consecutive late model sportsman championships beginning in 1972. Before the division was reorganized as the Bush Grand National Series in 1982 with its current schedule of 30 races, the Ironman simply out-hustled his competition. In one grinding five-day span in 1973, Ingram raced in six different states. I think he uh, inspired a lot of people to run all these races, championship races, because he kept winning those championships and he'd come in over Hickory Speedway and i say, where'd you run last night in Myrtle Beach? How'd you do? One Friday night, Savannah won. You know, he just could just win races everywhere he went. And the people now, the young guys in the Bush Series, don't realize what a competitor Jack was back then. I mean, you know, it was just unreal that he could win all them races and championships like he done it. Jack Ingram was one of the first men to make his living entirely from what he took home from the racetrack. He was a pioneer and his uncompromising, unrelenting style of racing helped put the Bush Grand National Series on the map of the motorsports world. Always, and he pulled that old number 11 in, you know, Brown, he's be Brown all the time. And he pulled that old number 11 in, you know, and he, he always knew you had to beat him. And, uh, you know, we patterned a lot after Jack, me and a couple more drivers that travel around, and I travel around with Jack a lot, uh, just really to learn a lot from him. And, uh, uh, he had the best prepared race car and the best race car that I ever seen in my life to never have nothing ever happen to it. And uh, I know Jack used to be a racer part time and he was a pipe fitter in Asheville. You know, he worked, uh, he'd take off during the summer and do his racing and go back to work in the winter. And then he went full time. And uh, I said, boy, I didn't know if I didn't want to do that or not, you know, but uh, he, he got even more successful when he done that. And so I followed in the same process as he did. And, uh, 1978, but I only made a, a couple, about a year or a year and a half I went into Winston Cup, and I didn't have that in my plans, but but Jack has helped a lot of, of sportsman drivers over the years. Well, that's exactly right, because somebody like Jack Ingram, as successful as he was and still is today, you know, that, that opens the doors for a lot of people because, you know, people look at me as maybe I can be like Jack Ingram someday, and it gives me something to look up to. You know, when you race against a guy that's 50 years old and he's still banging fenders with you, well, being 24, well, you know, maybe I still got 25 years also. And, you know, he he's, an, he's the kind of man that if you go to Jack Ingram and say, Jack, what am I doing wrong? He's not going he's not gonna kiss you on your hand and say, you're really not doing anything wrong. He'll say, well, you wrecked me. And sometimes people take that wrong. But he's one of the most honest men in racing, and you can ask him something, and he'll tell you the truth. There's not a lot of people around like that. Uh, to me, that means a lot, and it's helped racing a lot also. Jack Ingram holds records that may never be broken. Long after his individual wins are forgotten, racers and the fans alike will talk about the way he won. His legacy will never fade with time. His impact on the sport of stock car racing will never be fully appreciated. Old trophies will collect dust. Old race cars will rust. But old friendships, Old battles will burn brightly, they must. For no one raced harder than Jack Ingram, we trust. The first time that I remember meeting Jack Ingram, I drove one of his cars at Columbia, South Carolina in a sportsman race on a Thursday night. Don't remember how it came about that I was selected to drive the car. I think the promoter wanted me in the race because I was already in what is now Winston Cup racing. And so I drove Jack's car. It was a good race car. I took it to the front, was leading the race with about three or four laps to go and ran up on a lap car that spun me out and uh, we wrecked the car and uh, I didn't win for him. But uh, we became good friends after that. And Jack has told me since then that 
he put number 11 on his car because that was the number that I had on my car, and I really appreciated that. A person like Jack Ingram doesn't leave a Bush Grand National Series without being missed. I mean, everybody out here is going to miss him, but it's going to make racing a lot easier because uh, when you have to compete against the Ironman, it's definitely going to be easier. Well, Jack Ingram has been the epitome of short track racing for many, many years and certainly has made so many good contributions to the sport. He has raced perhaps uh, as many times as any other individual over the years, and he has won his share of races, certainly, but he's always done it fair. He's just a fine individual and has made some great contributions to the sport. So a conquering hero, a self-made man, has strapped in for the last time. His fellow racers will breathe a little easier knowing that the Iron Man has stopped turning left. There is a plain, simple truth about Jack Ingram. He loved to race, and he did so on his terms.